What is up guys, it's James from Flight Sim and oh, did it again. <laughs> what is up guys, it's James from Fish Stakes and we're back on Flight Sim. If you've been paying any attention to Flight Sim news recently, you'll know that Microsoft listened to us and they put Halo Infinite into Microsoft Flight Sim in the form of the Pelican dropship, which we all know and love from the Halo series. So that is what we're gonna be doing today's tutorial on. We're gonna go through cold and dark start as well as how to get this thing in autopilot, which is actually possible despite the fact there's a few issues with it, um, but there is a simple setting that you just need to turn on in order to get this autopilot working. So I'm gonna go through that straight away. You're gonna wanna come to your pause menu and you're gonna wanna go to controls options. Once you're in controls options, you just need to search for autopilot. And then you're gonna wanna come down and what you're looking for is autopilot nav one hold. This is the option that we're going to use in order to get this thing following our flight plan, which I've already set up in the world map. So that should be ready to go. So you don't want to hit the autopilot button on the systems. You just want to hit this hotkey, otherwise it's not going to work. That's the only way to get this thing working at the moment. So let's jump back to the Pelican and go through cold and dark start. You'll be pleased to know it's fairly simple in the Pelican. So we're going to start by coming down here and turn on our master battery. And then our master avionics, which brings all our systems to life. First thing we're going to want is our engine infos. Because we'll need that for startup in a second. Here's our radar map and there's our flight plan, which we can see already set up from the world map. So with those systems on, we can now turn on our master generator. And once the master generator is on, we can go ahead and start up our engine. So we're going to go engine one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to open both of these fuel valves and once those engines are nice and warmed up all four engine lights will go off and we can put our engine generators on and then we're ready to take off while we wait for that I'll put the beacon on I'll put the strobe on and I'll put the wing light on in terms of takeoff your landing gear is here so once we're up in the air we can get rid of our landing gear and we switch from hover mode to cruise mode with this toggle here so if you don't know already, the Pelican has VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, so it's just going to go straight up. There is no need for a runway, despite the fact that we're on one. I like to wait for about 20%, which we're nearing on all of them. You can see our lights have gone off, so we're pretty much ready um, to put our generators on. And with that, we're basically ready to go. All you're going to do to take off is give the aircraft a little bit of juice. And it'll go straight up and then you want to get ready on your landing gear as well as switch into cruise mode. The one thing I recommend is once you switch to cruise mode, go straight to altitude hold mode just to level out the Pelican because it's a little bit crazy once it gets up there. This thing moves quite fast. So, a little bit of juice. Now we're off. Keep an eye on your altitude. About 2,000 feet, I'm going to bring the landing gear up. I missed. <laughs> okay, landing gear up. I'm already in flight mode. Landing gear up, right. So your landing gear is going to go up, then you're going to go into cruise mode. At which point, you probably want to hit altitude hold mode just to stabilize the aircraft. And now, I'm going to put the auto throttle on just to manage our speed for us. And what we're going to do here is, in fact, I'm going to sort the speed out right now. I'm going to take this right down to 300. So once we're at that speed, what we can do is we can hit our hotkey that we set up earlier, which for me was right stick and down. And now you can see the aircraft is already starting to turn. It will now follow our flight plan that we put in. So now autopilot is finally working properly in this aircraft. Of course, we are far too high for a dropship, but again, that thing's just bugged. This thing took off like a rocket. You can already see 4,300 is supposed to be our limit, and it's at 28,000, so chaos, right? But we're going to sort that out now with our selected altitude. We're going to bring this to 12,000 feet. Okay, guys, right, we're back at a suitable speed and also a suitable altitude. And we are also just getting ourselves back on our flight plan here, as you can see. As I said, this thing can be a little bit buggy, so if anything doesn't work, all I can suggest is try it again, because these things do work. It's just a case of getting it to work on the day, almost. 
at least for now. But as you can see, our autopilot is now engaged. We're getting ourselves back on track here. And we have our altitude being managed here at 12,000 feet. And our speed being managed here at what I believe I set to... I always go to the bank limit. Speed here, 300 knots, which is perfect. Which we are at, at about 303 knots and 12,600. Gonna level out at 12,000 there, so that's fine. Over here at our radar, we can adjust our map range. So if we come out a little bit, we can see where we are, where we're going. A little bit better. And over here, of course, is your altimeter data and your speed all of that good stuff now a couple of other features that this has um is if we come over here we can switch this to cam vision the cam vision is accurate vision of the landscape below us so you could potentially use this kind of as a spy plane obviously this would be the kind of thing they'd be looking for a drop zone or they'd be looking for troops to pick up um but it's a pretty fun system to play about with i probably didn't pick the best most exciting area but the camera moves around I mean, it is a live camera it actually works which i think is really cool if you wanted to use it as a spy plane it could be quite fun but that is pretty much it in terms of the pelican guys that's it set up on autopilot let's just switch back to our radar so we can see that so we've got our autopilot working and we've taken off from cold and dark as i said it can be a little bit buggy especially with the altitude but you can get it under control with a little bit of fine tuning you might have to come off autopilot and lower the plane yourself if it's just going haywire. But it can be done, so don't worry about it. And I'm sure they'll iron these things out in a future update. And we can also have a look at the view from back here in the cargo bay if you did set up your custom cameras. Which I suppose is a pretty cool, cool view. I wish you could open these bay doors. That would be really awesome. But so far I've not found a way to do it. I'm not sure it is possible, unfortunately but perhaps a future update Microsoft. That's pretty much it in terms of stuff to show off. There is one more cool little feature which I will save once I'm over a nicer area for you all to look at. Okay guys, so if you know anything about me already, you'll know that I love Japan, so here we are flying over Japan. It's slightly more interesting scenery and I'm gonna just show off quickly the cam vision. So we come down, hit cam vision. Here's our camera. Now we've got a better look at something a little bit more interesting again can change the camera angle here it's all live camera as well exactly what is beneath us is what's being shown so again quite cool as like a little spy cam or a little spy plane or something like that i think it's a really really fun feature the fact that it actually works is awesome and there is one other sort of secret little feature this cd player here or tape drive whatever you want to call it if you hit play on it yep this happens and you can take in the views and pretend you're playing halo infinite i guess as a pelican pilot and some of the views you can get in this thing by the way are incredible thanks to this nice big open cockpit in the night sky you'd see all the stars and whatnot in fact let's take a look what that'll look like so I switched to night time and the first thing I've noticed is there's no actual internal lighting in the cockpit but what you do get is this sort of torch for the pilot which I think is awesome so obviously anything you look at gets lit up by the torch which just gives me Halo vibes Master Chief with the torch on his helmet the satellite imagery still works at night it looks like it is direct satellite images rather than a live camera because it appears to still be daytime on the camera but obviously as you can see it's a night time outside but that's okay we'll let it slide i mean just the views you get out of this cockpit are incredible because it's so it's so wide open i mean look at this there's tokyo tower down there just beautiful with the halo theme blasting just incredible and if you're not in autopilot by the way and you just want to have fun with this thing it it's a lot of fun it's a very for a big aircraft it's very maneuverable and yeah it's just a lot of fun to fly about and mess about with it's capable of inversions barrel rolls whatever you want so i would suggest get yourself on here it's completely free get it downloaded whether you're a halo fan or not if you're not a halo fan just pretend you're drop shipping troops and you know make your own missions have a little bit of fun with it that way 
I really, really like this for a free update, and I welcome any continued crossover support. Let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see come to Microsoft Flight Sim, actually. That'd be pretty interesting to know. As we cruise past Tokyo Tower there, I think I'll leave it there. That'll do for this video. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in the comments. And until next time, folks, we'll do a sick battle roll. And I'll see you in the next video. Matane!